16-year-old Frank Abagnale Jr. is a rich kid living with his parents, Frank Abagnale Sr. and Paula, in New Rochelle, New York. This is a true story of a clever boy who would go on to pull off one of the most remarkable feats in crime history, becoming a teacher, an airline pilot, a doctor, and a lawyer in less than five years. One morning, Frank is awoken from sleep by his father, asking him to follow him to a meeting. The duo drive to a store to borrow a black suit, but is met with rude refusal by the female storekeeper. Instead of giving up, Frank Sr. bribes her with a golden necklace. This trick works, and Frank Jr., now wearing the black suit, drives his father to the Chase and Manhattan Bank, pretending to be his chauffeur. Confused, he asks Frank Sr. what is going on, but is not given a straightforward answer. Frank trusts his father and agrees to wait in the car just as instructed. Frank Sr. proceeds into the bank to request a loan, but he is denied due to his unresolved business with the IRS. He is being investigated by the government for tax fraud. After his failed attempt to secure the loan, he has no choice but to sell his car, and the Abagnale family are soon forced to move out of their large home into a much smaller house. On Frank Jr.'s 16th birthday, he receives a checkbook funded with $25 in it. His father had opened an account for him as a gift and asks him not to tell his mother. These days, things only seem to be getting worse with the Abagnale family, and Frank Jr. gets enrolled in a public school. Frank shows up for his first day at school wearing his private school uniform. When his mother asks him to take it off, he says that he is used to it. Frank has barely gotten into the school when he is bullied by a kid who shoves him against the lockers. He proceeds to class and bumps into the same kid. The kid mocks him because of his uniform, saying he looks like the substitute teacher. Frank spots an opportunity to get back at his bully. He walks up to the front of the class and pretends to be the substitute teacher. Next, he confidently instructs the students to take their seats and asks the bully to read in front of the class. That Frank Abagnale could be his teacher, causing the entire class to burst out laughing. The real teacher soon arrives, and Frank still manages to skillfully send her away, claiming that it must have been a mistake. Frank manages to keep up with this for one week before he is caught. His parents are invited to the school and informed that Frank has been posing as a substitute French teacher for about a week. His mother seems shocked and unhappy, but his father looks rather impressed. Frank returns from school one day, and he is surprised to meet his father's friend, Jack Barnes, alone with his mother. He realizes that his mother is having an affair with Jack. This makes him really sad. His mother is troubled and gives him some money, asking him not to tell his father. Frank collects the money, angrily storms into his room, and slams the door. Not long after, Frank returns home again and sees some man's suit lying casually on the sofa. He confronts the man, thinking that he had come to see his mother, but it turns out that he is wrong. The man asks him to calm down and leads him into another room where his parents are waiting for him. Turns out that the man is a lawyer and his parents are getting a divorce, but they want Frank to choose which parent he will be staying with. Overrun by confusion, he is unable to choose. He darts out of the room and heads for the train station. It's quite obvious that it's his mother who wants to leave. For the following days, or even months, Frank moves from hotel to hotel using the checkbook his father had given him to survive. The account is empty, so it bounces several times. Frank begins to craft fake checks in a bid to collect loans from banks, but he has very little success with this. Frank strolls out of a bank one day after getting refused again from taking a loan and sees an airline pilot checking into a hotel. An idea pops into his head when he notices the esteem and respect that is being given to the man, so he decides to pose as a pilot himself. He writes a letter to his father, informing him of his progress. He lies to him that he has applied to all the big airlines and that he has several interviews lined up. He proceeds to Pan American Airlines, pretending to be a student who is writing an article for his school's paper in order to gain information about being a pilot. Frank manages to trick the airline uniform supplier and gets the professional airline uniform. It works, and he gets his desired respect from everyone by putting on the uniform, and even the banks now agree to give him loans. Frank seems to be enjoying this newly discovered trick, and he doesn't look ready to stop anytime soon. He goes ahead to print several official payroll checks, which Pan Am airline employees could cash in. 
Frank heads towards the airport after he finds out that he can cash checks there. His cover holds out, but the tides soon turn when one of the cashiers asks him if he is the deadhead for the flight to Miami. A deadhead is a pilot who is flying for free on a plane in order to get to their scheduled route or assignment. Confused, Frank agrees, but the act demands that he actually join the flight. Without any other options, he boards the plane and puts on a confident act once again, leaving no suspicions in the hearts of the pilots. He gets to enjoy his first flight and his first sexual experience with one of the female flight attendants. While in Miami, Frank flirts with a female cashier, and she goes on to reveal important information about check routing. He attends an auction and buys a machine used to code bank checks. Meanwhile, at the FBI headquarters Washington, D.C., Frank's schemes have been picked up by a middle-aged FBI agent, Carl, who is determined to arrest him. Several days pass, and Frank decides to meet up with his father at a fancy restaurant. He gives him a nice car as a gift in a bid to impress his mother, but Frank Sr. turns down the gift, saying that it could cause some trouble with the IRS since he is still being investigated by the government for tax fraud. The pair talk for a while, and it is obvious that the older man doesn't want his mother to go. When his father asks, Frank Jr. reveals that his next destination is Hollywood. In Hollywood, California, Carl continues to track down Frank and drives to the hotel where he is staying. We see him greeting a friend he has made, an old man named Murphy. A few moments later, Carl breaks into Frank's room and notices that there is someone in the bathroom. Frank emerges from the bathroom a few moments later. He knows that Carl is an FBI agent and he puts his high IQ to use again. He confidently pretends to be a Secret Service agent called Barry Allen who is on the same case. Carl requests some identification, and he hands over his wallet to him. Just before the man can open it, Frank spots Murphy being led into a car outside and distracts the agent by telling him that Murphy is his partner. Somehow, Carl believes him after he puts on a good show, and only after Frank has escaped from the hotel does he figure out that he had just been played. Frank continues to pose as a student and learns everything he can about being a pilot at Pan Am Air. He soon discovers that there is news about a man posing as a pilot in the papers. He seems to have earned several nicknames, such as the Skyway Man and the James Bond of the Sky. Frank is pleased by the news and decides to take on the James Bond persona. He buys the same suit and an Aston Martin ride that is used by James Bond in a recent movie. Several months later, it's Christmas Eve, and Carl is working at the FBI all by himself when he receives a call from Frank. Frank apologizes to him and tells him his location, immediately making the agent suspicious. He proceeds to mock Frank, saying that he only called because he is lonely and has no one to talk to. This makes Frank angry, causing him to hang up the phone. Carl has the last laugh before continuing with his investigations. The next morning, Carl is having breakfast and doing more research at a restaurant when the waiter tells him that the name Barry Allen belongs to a fictional character known as The Flash. Using this information, Carl suspects that his target reads comic books and that he is a kid. He calls his partner and asks him to contact the NYPD for every juvenile runaway report in New York City. This search leads Carl right to Paula, Frank's mother, who was now remarried to Jack Barnes. Carl discovers the name of his target when he receives a student yearbook from Paula. Paula is shocked when she finds out that Frank cashed out fraudulent checks worth millions of dollars. Frank is now in Atlanta, Georgia. He takes interest in Brenda Stones, a beautiful nurse at a hospital where he goes to see an injured friend. After a short conversation with Brenda, he decides to pose yet again as a medical doctor this time, forging a fake certificate that states that he is a graduate of Harvard's medical school. It is obvious that Frank has fallen in love with Brenda. Frank gets hired at the hospital as a doctor named Frank Connors. He works as a supervisor for the interns on a midnight shift and ensures that Brenda gets selected each time. During one night shift, Frank and Brenda are engaged in a romantic session when he gets a call from the ER requesting his immediate attention. Brenda advises him to respond to the emergency. Frank arrives at the ER despite his lack of medical knowledge, and he can't stand the sight of the injured boy on the stretcher. He works his way out of the emergency room and throws up at a nearby bathroom. Meanwhile, Carl pays a visit to Frank's father and introduces himself as an FBI agent in pursuit of his son. Frank Sr. guesses that his son might be in trouble and refuses to give up his son's whereabouts. Just before Carl leaves, however, 
he spots a letter from Frank Jr. lying on a nearby table. Written on the letter is Frank Jr.'s current address. He instantly rushes to the location, but Frank is already gone. During another romantic session between Brenda and Frank, Brenda reveals that she is not a virgin and that she has had an abortion which caused her to get disowned by her father. Frank does not care and then professes his love to Brenda, offering to marry her. In New Orleans, they both meet Brenda's father for dinner, where Frank says that he is both a doctor and a lawyer. Brenda's father, who is a qualified lawyer, doesn't believe him and confronts him later, demanding to know the truth. Frank confesses that he is neither a doctor nor a lawyer. He says that he is just a kid who is in love with his daughter. Brenda's father thinks it is just a romantic speech and agrees to give them his blessing to get married. Frank asks what he would need to do to take the bar in New Orleans. He goes on to write the bar exam, which he passes, and becomes an assistant prosecutor at a law firm. During another meeting with his father, Frank gives his engagement letter to his father and invites him to his wedding. The young man's desperate efforts to reunite his family only go so far, however, and the limits seem to be learning that his mother is now married to Jack Barnes. Frank is broken by this news and decides to stop running from the FBI. His father, to a surprise, asks him to continue, stating that they will never catch him. Frank is overrun by a flood of emotions once again and storms out of the place. It's Christmas Eve again, and Carl receives yet another phone call from Frank. The criminal tells him that he wants everything to be over. He says that he is getting married and he wants a truce. Carl tells him that it is not possible because he has stolen over $4 million. Frank knows that he is getting close and assures Frank that he will be caught. Frank understands and greets him Merry Christmas before hanging up. Carl tells his colleagues that Frank will not change his name again because he is already engaged. The wedding night arrives and Carl tracks his way down to the wedding party. Frank spots him early from a distance and rushes upstairs with Brenda. He tells her the whole truth about everything and reveals his real identity just before escaping through the window with boxes filled with cash. A few days later, Frank is waiting for Brenda at the airport. When she arrives, he is devastated to notice several FBI agents in disguise clearly sent there for him. After carefully surveying the area, he decides to drive away. The place is now flooding with FBI agents because Carl believes that it is Frank's only exit point. The criminal, however, has another scheme up his sleeve. He poses as a Pan Am Airlines pilot and organizes an internship project at a college where he holds an audition for ladies who will embark with him on a trip to Europe. The trick works and he uses the girls, now dressed as flight attendants, as a form of distraction. He walks right past Carl and successfully escapes on a plane. The FBI agents end up intercepting the wrong person outside the airport whom Carl had paid to act as a decoy. Several months have passed and the FBI decides to stop the rat chase. Carl wants to go on, but his boss refuses, stating that if the agent couldn't catch him in America, then he would not be able to catch him in Europe. Carl and his closest colleagues are still determined to catch Frank, however, and they go on with their investigations. They soon discover that Frank has begun to cash real checks, so they visit an expert who reveal that such checks were made with a printer only available in some countries, including France. Carl remembers his conversation with Frank's mother and suspects that Frank could be hiding at his mother's home village in Mont-Richard, France. It is another Christmas Eve in Mont-Richard, France. Carl tracks Frank down to a nearby printing factory and he bumps into him as he is printing checks. When Carl sees Frank, he feels sorry for him. He tells the man that there are over two dozen French police officers outside who will shoot him if he steps out the door. He urges him to put on the handcuffs himself and come with him. Frank doesn't believe him at first, but eventually agrees to come along with Carl. When they step outside, it turns out that the agent is telling the truth and Frank is instantly arrested by the French police. Furthermore, just before Frank is taken away, Carl promises to have him extradited to the United States. Frank is taken to a French prison where he spends two years, dejected and sick, until Carl is finally able to extradite him. The two of them board a plane back to the United States, and when Frank asks about his father, Carl has no choice but to inform him about Frank Sr.'s death. Frank is left devastated by the news and locks himself in the plane's bathroom, from which he manages to escape immediately after the plane touches down. He finds his way to Jack Barnes's residence, where he meets his stepsister by the window. He is further broken by the realization that his mother has moved on, so 
he decides to stop running. When the FBI arrives, he willingly surrenders to them. He is tried and sentenced to 12 years in prison. Carl pays him constant visits during his jail term and eventually manages to convince the FBI to allow Frank to serve the rest of his sentence working for them. Carl's boss carries a test on Frank, and after performing excellently, Frank is accepted to work with the FBI under Carl. One weekend, he is walking along the street when he sees an airline pilot's uniform hanging in a store, and he is reminded of his past adventure of being an airline pilot. He puts on the suits and attempts to escape, but he is intercepted at the airport by Carl, who tells him that no one is chasing him anymore. Carl hopes that he will make the right decision and return to the office on Monday. Frank does, and he and Carl get to work on an FBI case.